a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, good evening. Today is April 22nd, and we already have Maria, who is least just listening. We have Matt, and we have Sarah. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. So I still practice in my channeling, and I just started channeling like maybe I think 11 days ago. Um, and it's, it goes interesting. I certainly feel the presence. I certainly feel presence. And it's quite physical. It's not something uh, other dimensional. I feel very physical sensations when they come and when they leave. And moreover, they, I, I feel like uh, sometimes unexpected things, like my emotions change very unexpectedly. Something very unusual comes. Uh, it was um, <clears throat> when the reptilian, our friend Grindel, came. It was it was certainly not me. It was very unusual uh, smile, very unusual way of feeling. I felt his presence, and um, so that was one of you know greatest confirmations I had because it was certainly not not anything I experienced before. But it's I I would say it's saddle. And um, and when I channel, it's mostly me, but I feel their presence, and I feel they kind of pick whatever they want from me and present. So to me, it seems like it is me making it up. But I feel great inspiration. I feel great energy. I feel very uplifted. It doesn't uh, when I do my public speaking. It's it, it's really like that. I I but you know it's it. I don't feel it any much different from being inspired, but I'm inspired with different energy. If, if it's Grindel, it's one energy. If it's Rojo, it's a different energy. So, so that's that's the stage I am in. And when I'm in this, in that state, I kind of get inspired and also get some sort of ideas coming, not words, but ideas, yeah, ideas and concepts are coming. So where, that's where we are. Any particular topics we want to bring today? I want to invite today my um, friend Rojo. Rojo is a Yael on a ship here in uh, Earth orbit. I met them about two years ago through Jim and Rojo like stepped forward to channel now and uh, he is she they are both sexes at the same time it's n it's not middle sex it's just he and she together uh, they can do that and it's fun for them but the yell are not very sexual so his his her sexes are not as expressed as would human be do you have any topics to bring up no, I just like to let it flow. All right. It would be interesting to know how they're uh, how they interact in their civilization. Mm. All right. Hey, Hunter. And hey, Casey. Ah, I remember Casey. Hunter. Ah. All right. Hey, Casey. So I'm about to bring Rojo, and um, I was advised by through Jim. I was advised by my friends to um, to be very slow and pause to let the download to come because they they're just adjusting their ways of communicating with me, and I'm adjusting the ways to to get the information. Another interesting thing was that they, they leave a lot of energy with me. So when, when they are gone, I'm still infected with their leftover traces. I Next few days, I'm speaking like Grindel or like Rojo. And uh, so they and how much more enriched he is now. He has all these traces, he has all this personality staying with him. I have only 
two or three visiting who have visited me and I already feel that presence and uh, this personality is with me. So that's very interesting. There are traces. You let, let someone in and, and you you're become part of them or they become part of you. I will join back but I have to close right now, okay? Oh sure, no problem. I'll come back. Thank you for uh, being here with us. Anything I need else to say? Yeah, someone said that it's all delusion. And I, uh, someone said in comments that I need to discover God. And I would answer that if it is delusion, it's very nice delusion. And it feels very real, very real. And discovering God, it, it's exactly what I'm doing. It's exactly my way of discovering God and serving God. All right. Um, anything else there? We are we are broadcasting. If everything goes good, I will just keep it up there. If we need to remove something, I will just edit it later, or have ask Slava to edit it later. Uh, my brother died yesterday so I'm still uh, very much in that frame of mind so topics of death and life and destiny and free will and choices and uh, spirits uh, I, I welcome thank you I'm sorry for your loss thank you <sighs> I will I'll I will invite Rojo to come through. Hello, hi, welcome, uh, I'm Rocha, mostly it's still Max, but I, I'm partly here, my personality is coming through. Uh, you wanted to know how we communicate, I guess the key here would be that we are not personality wise we are not as different from you we incarnate as you and you incarnate as us we are in many ways the same and we carry your DNA ancestral from the past and you carry our DNA ancestral from the past we have been there here on earth thousands of years ago two thousands one thousand we have been visiting walking we are walking now among you so we are much connected. So personality wise we are similar. But of course we are from a different dimension now. And we are telepathic. And we carry some of the grace DNA. So we have our civilization of Yael has the property of the high mind. It's not as much as high mind as in grace. 
we have much personality because we carry also your earth human DNA. So we have personality. But if we want to connect to the common collective mind, to the high mind, we can. What else do you want to hear? <sighs> Hello, everybody. Let me look at you. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. <coughs> May I you write, please repeat yeah. your name? Rojo. Rojo. Thank you. And what's your name? Hunter. Hi, Hunter. I saw okay, Max, so your your avatar. Mm, thank you. Oh, you have an avatar of mm, mm, I cannot tell who is that. What, what who who is that on your avatar? I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I, I think it's an Octurian. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I see. Do you know anybody that, by the name of Yol? Mm, nothing comes through, but I would see a blue tall bean, not Pleiadian, or not as much Pleiadian. I don't know. What do you know about Yol? I was meditating and asking for a being to come through, and ah. that is the name I had received. I don't know which race is that. Hmm. Let me ask for a symbol for you. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I see a symbol of two golden balls which you can hold in hands, shining it's like orbs and when you bring them closer there is a, an energy going through like double helix or multiple helices when you tell, take them apart it stops when you bring them closer there is an energy exchange that would be a symbol for you thank you that brings much information Ah. Thank you for asking. I invite conceptual questions. Not much specific information comes through this channel yet. It is to come in the future. But I can bring some perspective or answer questions about your problem. What's your highest excitement, Hunter? Why is your name Hunter? Um, you, well, um, I would like to be successful. Ah, interesting. And interesting. I guess my name Hunter translates to master in German. Oh, and wow. I guess that's what I want to be, a master of myself, I guess. Ah. How do you express your desire of success? How do you Abundance. Go about that. Specifically, could you give me something third dimensional? What is Money. specifically? Ah, interesting. <laughs> that it would be very usual to hear from mainstream person, but in this Headgowns, that would be a very unusual approach. <laughs> so.
So how do you feel about that? What's your emotion here? I'm not sure. I'm I have very mixed emotions at the moment. I don't know what to go for. I don't know. Is there any challenge you want to bring up and discuss like any wall you need to overcome? What's your today's worry or what's your today's project? What's your today's excitement? Um I would like to know if I have been attacked by negative energies. Ah. I cannot guess now, but if you give me more, I could try um, to give you a perspective. <laughs> lately, I have been, I have had a good day for the most majority, oh, and yeah. then I will come home, and I am not at all happy. I find myself being very negative, uh -huh. and this comes on a lot lately, yes. uh, more frequently. Uh -huh. And what do you do about that? I'm not sure. I guess go to sleep. Ah. Ah. Perfect. Yes. I agree. That's that's a great way. When you go to sleep, what do you do? How do you transit? Um, transit? What, what do you do? How do you meditate before going to sleep? I'm not sure. I guess trying to calm down because I find myself very angry. Built up ah. a lot of anger. Yes. Ah, perfect. Yeah. I would say you're not alone. It's 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 uh, the state of human collective at the moment. Hmm. Yeah. First thing to realize is it it is not your darkness that comes to you. It's it's like a rain. It's something you pick up from others. It's darkness that is just available for you and you just pick it up. It's not yours per se. Do you so, have any methods of protecting myself from said negative energies? Many methods are there. Yeah. Pick them up. There is like hundreds of ways. <sighs> Speak like when you go to meditation state or to sleep. Speak with words. You don't have to speak aloud, but speak in your mind if you wish. Uh, speak to yourself. Speak to me, if you wish. Speak certainly to your higher self. You can speak to any form of God, if you like, to the source. Speak to your spirit guides. And maybe if you are inclined so to your angels or an angel and just state what you wish it's like your intention your choice state your choice your purpose that's it very easy it could be very straightforward I would like or I invite or I wish or my purpose, and then just state it. Hmm. And, thank you, Bravo. Uh, thank you. And uh, one step, the closest step, is possibly to gain the balance. But little farther, it is. It really helps to have a very higher goal, very high goal. And as you said, money, abundance, success are great goals. Money, abundance, success, but I don't hear in that any service to others. So if you are inclined so, 
if you are into the idea of servicing others, you may specify specifics why, how is your energy, how is your flow of abundance, how is it a part of bigger flow because it is a river that flows through the energy and a little branch comes through you but if you help the river, if you help the life on the planet and the universe to become more perfect, then you get much more help. I guess it is rather obvious. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. I invite discussion anybody on any topic. I would like to give you a general perspective if if you're interested. Do you share similar excitements with crystal technologies and or crystals and different uses for them? Crystals. This is Brother JC Rojo. Uh -huh. Hey Brother JC. I'm your sister brother Rojo. Crystals. What can I tell you about crystals if you all know so much about them? <laughs> uh, greeds of crystals. I guess our children play with crystals at very early age and they're their friends. Each crystal has personality and you can talk to them. They are especially intended to store information. So you can put something in them and they store it and you can take something out. It's interesting, everything is a flow of energy. So why crystal would be any different? It is not. The only difference of crystal from non-crystal is it is so orderly, it's so geometric, it has platonic solids in very repetitive fashion. It's like tons, 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 tons of the same thing. So you're also very repetitive. You have your genome in every cell. Imagine billions of cells having the same message. That's what you are. You have that message repeated billions times because you have billions of cells. And the crystal is the same thing, it, but it is just a platonic solid. Now, you are also a platonic solid because your etheric body is built on platonic solids. I don't know if you are familiar with that concept. I am thinking you heard about it. Yes. Yes. I, I'm able to perceive uh, that which you are projecting to me in this now moment. So, crystals is one platonic solid and your etheric body is many different platonic solids playing fluidly, liquidly, Mm, transformedly together. They they flow. These energies are adjustable, but the crystal is fixed. So this platonic solid communicates with your energy chakras and platonic solids which build you. That is one of the connections. Thank you. I have a question. Um, oh, yes. What would the benefits to having a 12-strand DNA structure be to the two-strand we, we know of? Um, yes. Uh, the concept of 12-strand DNA structure is an oversimplification. It is not what most of light workers would think. And Bashar mentions that several times and it's obvious 
where two strands feed, there is no place for 12. There is only a place for a third strand, and that's it. And this third strand is known by scientists. It's RNA where it fits in DNA. So, so in this physical 3D, it is two-stranded DNA, and that's it. Now, when you go to next layers of other dimensions, then other strands manifest. They are there. So these extra strands, they are there in other layers of your bodies, astral bodies, etheric body, astral body, mental body, mm, or a few other names. I'm, I'm blanking on that. And uh, the message is that right now there is so much noise in the system. You are so disconnected from your spiritual body that there is no resonance. And as you ascend to higher dimension, as you become more purified and vibrate with more energy and more purity, you connect to your much more pure DNA strands in spiritual bodies, in etheric bodies, and they're activated, they become activated. That's the topic of activation of other strands of DNA, meaning in other parallel dimensions where your spirit bodies are. Is it? Thank you. Uh, um, did, I mean, did, I, did I get the message through? Yes, yes. You, there's many beautiful messages layered into <laughs> the words that, that were spoken. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That is a nice question. I had a question about um, the mitochondria within the DNA. I came across a channeling about activating mitochondria in one's DNA to assist with purging if you will, three, four D control fear matrices that's within the DNA, if you will. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Would you be able to share any reflections or perspectives or any information in regards to this? Yeah. Um, we said activation of which matrices? Um, the mitochondria. Um, within deep, if you use the word deep and then I'm Deep layer matrices? Uh, the 3 and 4D control and fear matrix. matrix the control of fear. Yes. Um, that the mitochondria could be activated to assist with purging um, the controls and fears that are within our 3D matrix. Okay. It is simple, and but there are many ways to approach it. I will just approach it in the simplest possible. So it would be symbolic approach, because symbolic is much simpler. Thank you. All right, so mitochondria is not within DNA. Mitochondria is nearby. It has its own DNA. So you have your chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell, your DNA. It's called your genome. And you have an alien within each of your cells, which is called mitochondria. It is not exactly your thing. It's kind of every cell has a guest, an alien, a little tiny organelle which has its own genome. So, say, mammalian cells at some point just swallowed an alien, which it was maybe an alien from Earth, but it was a different organism. So it was an alien organism to that eukaryote, to the mammalian yes. cell. Yes, and yes. they live there in cytoplasm outside of the nucleus. It doesn't matter. What matters? No, it is matters. It does matter. So that mitochondrial DNA is different. It's different than yours. 
And in Jewish tradition, their inheritance, the belonging to the clan, belonging to the bloodline, counts through the mother because mother passes to the child their mitochondria. So if the father doesn't, only the mother passes the mitochondrial DNA to the child. So that mitochondrial DNA carries their bloodline. That is significant in some senses. So the fear, how do you connect the fear with mitochondria? Nah, interesting. The fear is when you lose your breath, when you hold your breath, you run out of oxygen. And one of the things that mitochondria does is breathing. Every cell breathes with help of mitochondria. So that's one of its function. And you know, when you get your life, you become alive with the first breath, right? So breath is something which is very symbolic of life. And the last breath is symbolic of death. So mitochondria is greatly connected with breathing and consumption of oxygen and conversion it to energy. So of course that breathing is connected to fear. So that is symbolic connection of mitochondria to fear. There is more, many more interesting things about mitochondria, but I guess I gave you one of the prospectors. Thank you so much. Ah. How is everybody? What else is happening to you? Max, I'm sending you an image now of the symbol you gave me. Is this correct? Let me look. Uh, oh, you're sending it telepathically? Yes. Ah. Uh. I think it is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Any more topics? How do you beat that? Um, I would ask, um, well, first off, welcome, Rojo. This is to Matu again. Matt, yes. It's a pleasure. A pleasure. Nice talking to you. So, Rojo, I was wondering, maybe you might have a symbol I could uh, get from my guides I could meditate with that could really benefit me as well. I'm having a um, dif difficult time, I think, getting into a deeper meditation. Mm. So something to focus on like that, I think, would be beneficial. Mm. Ah. Okay. Ah, here we go. Just a second. Ah. All right. So the key here, how to go from not very deep meditation to a deep meditation. And uh, any visualization keeps you from going deeper because deeper there is no visual. It's, it's nothingness. You don't see things where or there. It's beyond the visual range. You have to lose your sight to get deeper. Uh, first thing, you still can hear a hum, and I would recommend a low pitch hum, very low hum. Just listen to it and you will ca 
capture that hum. It's not always there, but if you invite it, it comes. Low pitch hum. And you just embrace it. It helps. And filter out the high pitch hums. They're usually not that helpful. And then the imagery I would give you is going through the tunnel. And when the tunnel ends, you come out of it and there is nothing. And that helps to remove any visual imagery and blank your imagination, visual imagination. That's my suggestion. Beautiful, Rahul. Thank you. You're welcome. What density are you, Rahul? We are uh, for density. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. Counting your density is so reinforced. Yes. Your presence, I have never felt a presence like yours before. That's why I ask. Ah. I don't know if it's typical or maybe it is just an artifact of connection. I feel comfortable though. So it's. If it's artificial, it's not overly artificial. We are the four density, but we aim to rise. We aim to evolve. And as you evolve, we evolve. There are artificial veils separating dimensions and densities. And that is a necessary part of the design of the of the creation. The veils are needed. As your skin separates you from outside, as dimensions and densities are guarded. There are special energies and ideas and beings who guard the veils. They are working bees of creation, keeping everything in shape and working properly. Your collective human consciousness keeps the veils around the earth and around your dimension working properly and preparing for ascension where the veils would be reformed and transformed. I hope it helps. Bring me your troubles. I like problem solving. If I can give you a perspective that could help you, that gives me great pleasure. Okay, I have one. This oh, is great. Sarah. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Okay, when moving, when ascending, uh, another member here uh, believes that we will ascend to, from the idea of male and female into one male female entity into one body. Uh huh. What do you All think right. about that? Ah. So you are sending it to me. Ah. <laughs> I'm asking. Yes, yes. Um. Oh, let me get more. It's all about experience. Every soul here had 
male and female past lives. And as you evolve, evolve as a soul, you aim at reaching a balance, a very energetic and strong appearance and balance. You have vortex, and you want that vortex to be stronger and more balanced. So you choose a gender when you incarnate to become stronger vortex and more beautiful, more purified, more balanced vortex. Hmm. And yes, in uh, higher density, in four density, there is more experimentation with gender because it gives you more tools to evolve as a spirit and not only individually but as a society so some of us and some of other races have more than just pure male and pure female we have more variations of that gender if you study the biology is has been created or evolved or both to help evolution <sighs> yes it is just a way of biology to help the species to evolve. There is a specialization. Females give birth and males guard them and fight. That is very familiar to your earth life everywhere in all species, insects, fish, anywhere. Yes, but it seems that we're coming upon a new paradigm where even the aspects of ourselves, let's take the Nagas for example, when I asked was it male or female, I got it's both. Ah, yes, and as you go in higher density, there is less of duality. It is still there, but there is less of this separation. It's more united. So there are still sexes, but that primitive fight and competition is not much there. We are not hungry anymore. We, are, we still have wars in that density, but but it's not about hunger anymore. It's not about physical strength. Not much more about it. We use that for spiritual growth and we use it to gain experience, but it's not as physical in as it is on Earth. And so it is with gender. It's not as much expressed and having intermediate gender keeps you more balanced. What do you think about the concept of, okay, yes it's both, but it has the male version and the female version, but all encapsulated in one body and it's actually two separate beings? It can be either. Uh, we have males, we have females, and we have male and female in one body, and we have a neutral body which is neither male nor female and is basically asexual. But because we have so much capacity of transformation, we have so well developed technology, we can play with it very easily. We I can see. evolve and change from here to there. If you want to express ourselves as a female, we do that. And if I'm in mood to become a male, I do that. 
Interesting. So I have months when I'm a more male, and I have months where I'm more female. So do you change your whole aesthetic entirely to become male or to become a female in those months? Not entirely, but largely. Largely, yes. And it's not so as you're... scary to us as it is to you because physicality is not as expressed here. We are not we are so used to diversity and to f changing. We are not. We usually walk naked, and it's not nothing, nothing specially mm -hmm. emotionally charged as it is in your world. Not at all. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely non-charged because we are telepathic. We are more interested in what's. In, on the mind than what's outside. But we express ourselves, but it is like, you know, here's an example. In your hippie era, to grow, in 1963, 1963, to grow long hair was a heroic act which could ruin your career. It was mm -hmm. very emotionally charged. Now maybe doing something else would be equivalent to that, something more radical. Yes. But but now having long hair is nothing, right? Right. It's, it's nothing. So the same thing with us. Uh, I see. Having different body changes, it's it's not irreversible. It's It's so technically simple that it carries no emotional charge. I see. Right, but we play with it, yes, and we look at you and enjoy your emotions connected to love and sexuality. It's much stronger, and there is tons of negativity, but there is so much positive charge as well. We feel mm, intrigued by that. Mm -hmm. So we learn from you and bring some of that to us as well. Interesting. Hunter, you had a question? Yes. Does your physical body change when you say that you would, you're would you asexual, so you could be a male or a female? Does your physical body change? Yes, yes. It's very easy for us, yes. It's even easy for humans, but for us it's much easier, though. It's much easier. We can appear and disappear. We are that advanced. Not all four density races can do that, but Yael, especially well trained and practicing that, could easily do that. So, in case of danger, we can just disappear if you want to. Or if you just have a business, we appear somewhere, do our business, and just go away mentally. We don't have to use. Technology for that. Yes. Thank you for that explanation. That is Thank you. beautiful. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, there is lots of different um, varieties of gender in the universe. Yes. But the idea of male and female is still there. Because it's so simple, and the idea that one gender, say a male, has to look for the best pair, best female, and search for it, and it is one of the major goals in uh, life. It even, even still plays in four density as well, although here it is more search for a soul than for a body. Right. Yeah. I have a question. What other uh, gender would there be in the galaxy? Like, what what would what would you call it? I don't understand the question. So we have male, female, and you said there are other genders. So. Yes. Oh, you want the the names? Yes. Ah, I don't know if there are names for that. I guess human names would be hermaphrodites, meaning that you can 
multiply by yourself without having a pair. Right. And many animals can do that. They yes. have both male and female features in the same body. It's very handy, but then you don't evolve as fast. Evolution requires that sort of competition and combination, combination of different genes. So you don't combine your own genes, you combine it with somebody else. That's the key of the sexual drive and sexuality. With that right. simple combination of best genes. Right? Okay, so outside of male, female, and hermaphrodite, what's another one? A uh, neutral gender? Hmm. What's the difference? Um, you just um, don't have sexuality at all, you just divide <laughs> or you mentally create. No sexuality whatsoever. No sexuality whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> yes. And um, there are just three sexes. How do you call them? One, two, and three. There are four sexes. One, two, three, four. Hmm. So they just become oh. asexual. It just no type of outward appearance of any type of oh, no, no. aesthetic. We were talking... We are finished with neutral, and then three sexes. You have to have three different sexes to come together to produce a child. Interesting. How yeah. does that work? Oh, wow. Each contributes their genes. They mix together, and one carries a child. So it would be two males required to produce a child with one female. Hmm. Or sometimes two females and one male, but one of the females have to carry the child. But in this density, sometimes and often, the genes are combined mentally and the child is produced mentally. And so is the child produced out, outside of a being's body? Sometimes, yes, yes. Mentally, just creation of the child. Yes. Interesting, because we did and come up with that concept uh, before. Say again? We came upon that concept a couple of months ago. Ah. So it's interesting for that confirmation. And sometimes technology is used as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So yes, I mean, the... Those sexual abnormalities on Earth, they are just a sign of evolution. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how does it work in your society uh, with everyone being uh, both male and female? In our case, we would consider that as a hermaphrodite, but you're able to switch from one to the next. How does that work in a society? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I confused you. No, only me, I choose to be, um, maybe that would be called hermaphrodite, but most of us are choose to be the male or female. Ah, I see. Yeah. No, no, I no. see. Thank you for the um, no. explanation. And how are you viewed in society because of your choice? Is That's there a view at all? Uh, it's a common place. I wouldn't say there is any special. It's just no emotional attachment no, no whatsoever. They respect my choice, and it's it's not charged at all. Very good. What do you do in your society? What's your role? Ah. Uh. Not much I can say. I'm just helping out here in that project. Not much Thank more I can you. say. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about the first contact ideas. I am excited about learning more about you. And channeling for me is a great affair, mm -hmm. a project which I like. Mm -hmm. And I like aesthetic part of 
communication and aesthetic part of your life. Um, diversity intrigues me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Is there a burning question you wish to ask us? Ah, oh, so many. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Why do you watch television? <laughs> For entertainment. Uh, why do you attach so much value to the food? Because it tastes good. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, why you're so sad so much of the time? Emotions. Yes, why, uh, hormones. Hormones. Uh, Television. Yeah. Body aches. Society. Body aches. Food. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> Family problems. <laughs> I get dizzy. <laughs> Romo, do you dance? <sighs> what else? Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that your dance style? I'm thinking. I'm just thinking. It looks a bit like the Qigong. Dancing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why my question surfaced. <laughs> yeah, it was painful. Mm. It was yeah. painful. Why? Um. <laughs> uh, I became attached to the answers which you gave me, and it's uh, not as easy. I became too involved. Oh, yes. did we give you too much of our version of the truth? I just stepped in. I see. I stepped in. Yeah, I guess the purity is. Huh, why don't you choose purity? Why do you need to be so complex? Well, our lives are complex. Why do you make them so complex? <laughs> We're born into it. Oh, good answer. Programmed. Good answer. Uh -huh. We need to shut down the programs. Yeah, I understand in theory. I understand in theory that if you just shut down the programs, you would be not as successful, not as healthy, yes. But why is it so difficult for you to simplify your life? Why it has to be so fragmented? <laughs> because the only way to simplify is to let go of the things you've been taught. To see what you choose for yourself, and many of us, we just don't get the time to choose for ourselves because life, the way things are ran, they, it doesn't really give you time. You're rushing everywhere to do something, to be something, to go somewhere and read this or that. You're rushing all the time, and many of us who are here we had to separate ourselves from that in order to be here at this moment. We had to break away and that took pain because we had to let go of all we knew. And my version of that would be because I want to move too fast to where I want to go or I'm in a nice area and I would want to move as slow as possible. Uh -huh. Time. Yeah, I mean. our time is so different. Our time is more like a tool than a dictator. Your time is so linear. You are now and and it moves it drags you forward. 
mm-hmm. our time. We can play with time. We can go to the future a little bit. We go to the past a little bit. We can stretch it. We can circumvent it. Mm-hmm. The time for us is so like like you're. You can take right, you can take left, you can go forward, you can go back in your space. We can do the same in large extent with time. It's more like a conventional, comfortable tool than something that we have to be satisfied and be afraid of. Yeah. Yeah, that would be wonderful, which is why we're ascending so we can get to that point as well. That sounds great. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what questions to ask you? <laughs> Max, oh, I, I have know. another question. I mean, sorry. Yes, Roha, I have ahead. a question for you. Yes, thank I, you. you. When you first came in, you were talking about communication. Yes. And I wanted to ask you if I had a message, but I had a deeper question than that. How do you know to give me a message if someone, if another being wanted to give me that message? Is there a cloud? Like, is there a, like a virtual cloud of energy that has languages and feelings above me all the time and you can access different clouds of different beings? I would say it's a good image, yes. <sighs> Yeah, if you look from your perspective, that would be a cloud. If you look from the cloud perspective, it's not a cloud anymore. It's a vibration. If you are in one state, you connect to one thing. If you are in another state, you connect to another thing. Mm. It's like your radio or television or cell phone. Mm. Uh, Or music or music. Um, You play one music, you become one thing. You play another music, you become another thing. And you connect to its creator, you connect to other people just through music. Yes, so play a tune which is good, it feels good, and then you connect to someone on the other side who is in alignment with that tune. Or it can be, instead of the tune, it can be an idea. An idea is much greater because it's a symbol and it usually is desirable and it's emotionally charged. So emotionally charged idea is a great tool to connect with other side, specifically with someone on other side. Yes, the address, the name, their sensation is a tool. Yeah. You choose, you have a choice, and understand that you're not here, you're not there where you are. It's um, only the end of the of the line of astral bodies, biggest part of you. You're already linked through your astral bodies to everybody here, everybody everywhere. So you're already linked, it's just going from you to the soul tree and back to that other representation. So you connect through that pattern. And it's not that far, it is pretty straight connection. Yes. Does it help? Maybe I need, uh, maybe you have more of clarifying questions. Well, if that's the case, I want to ask you, Um, Today I was doing a meditation and during the meditation I felt like I went into a city under the ocean, very deep within the ocean Mm -hmm. and I had to breathe through gills that were on my like chest and stomach area. Which species is that? What species is that? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it could be 
Hmm. It could be Alpha Centaurian. Alpha Centaurian? Uh huh. But I felt it was on this earth. Ah. Uh. But they have that in Alpha Centaurian? I don't think so. It could be a mermaid. Yeah, mermaid. It felt like a mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, mermaids are. <sighs> yeah, they they were leftovers of Atlantean experiments. Mm -hmm. They were created as a species in Atlantis. Not that they don't exist elsewhere, but these Earth mermaids come from Atlantis. Do you know which species, like what the name of it is? Oh, there. It doesn't come through, I'm sorry. It doesn't I, come? I, That's I, okay. I cannot give you the name, no. Sorry. Thank you for the confirmation. Oh, thank you for asking. Hmm. I felt excited speaking about gender and sex. <laughs> I know, that was a great topic. Ah, I might ask some questions about that. Mm. Oh, please do, ask. Yes. Mm. Why do you wear what do you wear? Because we're taught that we need to wear clothes. Uh, why and some of so us much? don't like it. Yes. No. <laughs> what? Ah, I see. Why there is Sexual so much attraction. How is it connected? What's the connection? <laughs> How well, sex is connected to dress? <laughs> well, you know, we do it for pleasure as well as as well as sexual attraction, as well as society or societal ideas of how one is supposed to dress and be clothed. Uh, we dress for business. There's a certain outfit for that sort of thing. Uh, there's a certain idea when you go out, you dress for that. Uh -huh. And go out to have fun, that is. There's a certain idea of a dress when you go to the beach. You know, it's, it's about variety. So I understand dress for business, like if you do hard work, you have to protect your skin. Yes. The one, the, the dress for business that I do not understand is the three-piece suit and a, and a tie around your neck. And uh, <laughs> I understand the tie. I if don't understand If someone grabs you by the tie, you're helpless. So is, the, tie, is that why the tie was created? I would assume so. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It you makes everybody more like Yeah. Because it looks more like a noose to me. So I don't quite understand how it could be helpful or agreeable to anyone personally. I find them. I find myself looking very dashing in ties. Like if I have a full suit on. You know, when you when you don't have that bare, you have a bare neck, right, with your collar. Uh -huh. You put on a nice tie, and it brings about, for me, it brings about like a certain, almost not authority, but a certain vibration of me that I just like presenting when I wear that tie. Uh -huh. I find it stylish, and I, I, I'm not sure what, I can't find a word for it. I just, I just prefer you, to you have did. one rather than not. You said you feel a certain vibration when you wear it. That's the answer. Is it related to throat chakra? It kind of protects it a little bit, or maybe it amplifies the throat chakra? I would say it's more closes it, I would say. That's yeah, what I believe. Mean. But Hunter, what about you? I'm not sure. I mean, if I have an all-black suit on, you know... I like a certain color of tie. I'm not sure what color I would like, depending on how I feel. It depends on my mood as well, my emotions. If I want to sit like, like let's say I'm in a not as good mood as I should be, I might wear a, 
uh, a darker color, maybe uh, like maybe red. Or, but if I'm in a very calm mood and I'm very powerful and I'm very comfort comfortable about the situation, I might wear a like a navy blue or even a black tie. Mm. I now, apologize. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, for me now, I think it's more of just a social thing where we're conformed to wear what they thought we should wear. Now, if I had to choose for myself, I would wear kind of what uh, Sarah was actually talking about the other day, something more loose fit, something more uh, freeing, you know? Um, no matter Dress. what occasion, I think I should feel comfortable. I, yes. But I get his aspect as well. But I'm just giving you another aspect. Uh, oh. of yeah, comfortable, I understand. Yes. Let me ask you, I apologize, but I will ask you a question which might sound a little cheesy if it's right <laughs> word. So, mm -hmm. would it for you, would the type symbolize a male organ in any way? <laughs> yes. Actually, I I will say so because I do not think many females wear ties. No, but in certain service industries, they require female to wear ties. Why? I have I still have no idea. <laughs> that's a good question. I I do. That that's a new way of looking at it. Should I say? Since females do not carry that male organ, right? Why right. do they require them to still wear ties? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe to make their business different. Oh, you would remember that if you had seen a female with a tie. You would remember yes. that business, would not? Yes, would that's not. what a lot of humans do a lot nowadays for their business: is how to how to be different, not necessarily reasons why, but just something to be a little different. Hmm. So why would, would why do you uh, humans shave in Western culture? Hmm. Well, I one shave because I, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, I would say, yeah, it's not personal choice. Usually, it's uh, a career choice. I guess. Oh, sometimes it is. Yes. Are we talking about uh, up yeah. and down? Facial hair, pubic yeah, yeah. areas. The, the beard, I meant. Pubic okay. Doesn't matter. Oh, oh, me personally, I do not find it attractive for my pubic hair to be un, un, <laughs> un whatever the word is I'm looking Tame. for. Just un, untamed. There we go. Yes, I don't. I'm not part wolf. I don't think so. I, I like just a personal preference. But the Did beard, you say, why? Bro? He's talking about the beard hunter. Uh, oh, beard! I have a beard. Huh. Where'd you? Uh, that? Um, that is the only facial hair I'm allowed to wear. So I guess hmm. it shows a sign of of maturity, a sign of of maturity. I would say. Uh huh. Yeah, we. Hmm. No, we don't shave. No. But Do you we don't have, have much hair. No. We don't have much hair. <laughs> we don't have. Um, we just have almost invisible hair. Mm. Do you like the feeling of Max's beard? <laughs> I'm just thinking about he's like massaging Max's neck and he's he's like hmm, I wonder how this feels and Max is like what is going on? You know? That's a new feeling. That's very interesting. That's why I'm it's a new feeling on fingers and it's also the new feeling on the neck. <laughs> I love you, bro. Uh, yeah, that's. that's love. That's surprising on fingers and pleasant on the neck. Mm. We don't uh, pet each other that much. We pet each other <laughs> with energies, not with uh, physical things. We touch each other, but mostly to express things, not to be, not to sense things. So you 
you massaging Max's net is more like petting for you. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, it feels very pleasant, yes. <laughs> but it's surprising on fingers. Fingers feel surprised. I don't do much of that I, sensation now. That's an unusual thing. So you, even your males aren't very hairy? They don't, they don't grow much hair? Um, we look bald, yes. We have a little bit of hair, but um, it's almost invisible. We look bald. Anything else you would like to ask us? Mm, yes, yes, of course, there are tons of questions. If you, if it was your light worker's choice, what would you change? In the, um, I guess let's talk about gender things and dress things. That I guess these are, as um, we are on the topic. <laughs> that's a good question. As much as I like them, I would change females. Uh, the ways females dress, they they wear very low cut shorts that show the uh, the butt. Right, and I I find it attractive. Don't get me wrong, I do, but you know when I'm when I'm in a family environment or there's a certain place for that kind of dress, and everywhere is not that place. You know. Well, you would certainly have a heart attack if someone like me just walked up into a place naked. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just I would I'm just saying. Pay to where everybody can just be freely naked. Uh, okay. Yes, I was going to say the if same thing. If you would thing. like to be naked, I do, it does not bother me. But when there are girls, and I say girls, not women, girls, who are 14, 15, 16, and like to show off their butt, I do not find it uh, attractive. I don't, I, don't, I don't find that pleasing in any way. Mm -hmm. So I guess I would change that. Mm-hmm. I would. I don't know how I could. I, I can't impede on your free will, but that's what I would change. Interesting. Any more suggestions? It sounds interesting. I would say that's uh, generalizing because not all girls do that. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Not not. All of the girls. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some girls choose to do that. Yeah, but they they're doing it because of their idea of style, their idea of uh, their preference, their idea of they want to be seen in their group of friends. Uh, what was you know project the awareness of themselves out to others. Yes, and in, and in my environment, uh, I have, I guess you could say, a very low vibrational environment. Like, I don't live in the best neighborhood, so it's very common. Like, that's just the way that they're growing up. They're, you know, they see their mothers wearing it, so, hey, this is nice. And they see the famous Beyonce or the famous whoever on TV, and they say, oh, I want to be so pretty like them, and I want to do this, and so they reflect that by the way they dress as well. So not 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 saying everyone does it. I think you're a product of your environment. In my yes. environment, that's quite common. When I was asking, I was hoping for the answers which would change radically the humanity to the better. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant like. Okay, sorry. I would turn. say I would say that I think we should. Uh, what would really be would change is us stop judging what other people choose to do. Um, for mm. instance, if they want to be with a certain person, hey, that's their free will, and the whole bashing is huge. I would change that. How people uh -huh. just feel like I mean. they should say something to them if they disagree instead of just respecting that decision and you know 
I guess it is a question of perception, right? Yes. When you see something, it's so charged to you that it causes the whole avalanche of emotions and sometimes it could be a pain for you, sometimes it could be a pleasure, so a lot of arousal and repression. Ah. That's what it means to be human, we have emotions. Ah. Unfortunately. <laughs> and Fortunately and unfortunately. And what you Both. see is... I agree. Ah, and what you see is the first impression that you get. You almost don't get anything else other than what you see and what you hear. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's unusual. So you cannot really read their minds at all. You well, you can, you can hear what they say. There is ah. body language yes. as oh. well. There ah. is like... Um, unspoken communication going on with many things, whether it's a hand gesture, whether it's a blink of an eye, or it could be anything that can give you an idea of what a person or or a perception of who a person is. Um, it could be the tone of voice. It could be laughter. It could be a scrunch in the face, you know? There are many clues that we go by except for, you know, other than hearing and seeing. We feel. And then uh, scientists are understanding that our hearts talk to each other and yes. they communicate with each other in close yes. proximity. So we're feeling energy as well. And that may tell us something about a person when we first meet them as well. So when you meet the person you see them and also you feel the energy. Exactly. And there is sort of agreement or discordance between what you feel and what you see. Sometimes. Would it be nice to have a better agreement between the feeling and the visual. Hmm. Yes, that would be nice, but we're learning to do that now. Before, there was no cognitive awareness of it. So... Hmm. Yeah, we have so much to learn about your dress code. It is very different. It is very new to us. Pleiadians, though, have a lot of a lot of play with fashion and dress and we mm -hmm. don't. Yeah, Pleiadians look at you and pick up your fashions. Ah, do they now? Yeah. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and they exaggerate everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just have an image of a Pleiadian blue blonde hair like in this very very colorful outfit. <laughs> yeah, they do that. Yes. Rojo, what is your favorite color? Purple? Deep purple? Yes. And what's yours? Blue. Ah. Hmm. And what's your everybody? name in Spanish means red. Ah. And that's why I asked. I was just wondering. Ah. And what's everybody's favorite colors? I like uh like a light blue, sky blue type of ah. color. Mm -hmm. Well, you could call it aquamarine sometimes. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, I really, since I've been, I was a kid, have been in love with like a orange, orange, like a more brightish. Ah. Like your picture. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. I, do you mean like a kind of a burnt orange or um, not the right shade? Uh, I would say like a golden orange. Ooh. Oh. That's an interesting color. Very. Yeah, we have big eyes and we are used to the dim light. Yeah. So do you see color as well as the humans? Hmm. We see color as well as humans, but our dynamic range is better when the light is dim. When it is brighter, we have to use technology to dim it because we are designed for darker environment. Mm -hmm. yes. So we basically wear dark glasses in your lighting. Mm -hmm. Rojo, I wanted to ask you if if you could have the ability, would you uh, wear clo like a different clothing every day? What kind of style do you like? Ah, great question. Uh, let me let me think. Mm. Would I wear a tie? Mm. I I would experiment. It's so foreign to me. Uh, I would experiment and see because it doesn't matter for me. I don't care. We are kind of. We are negligent when it comes to physical sensations. We don't, we don't dwell on them, and we don't enjoy them as much as you do. So, how it feels, it doesn't matter as long as it's functional. But so I would be more interested in the response of of others to what I wear than to anything else, as you do maybe. So. If I so we would have to get you a fashion coordinator. <laughs> ah. So if I wore them on you, I would experiment to make you happy, and I wouldn't mind you laugh. So I would do more of experimentation, which would make you comfortable and laughing. So I would maybe, yeah, my 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 body parts are not as extreme as yours, so you wouldn't even consider them. Any anywhere related to sex, so so I would be like a doll for you, I guess. <laughs> um, nothing. Don't sexy. say that to Krell. <laughs> Krell might take on your offer. Who's that? Nitrous, Pegasus. Ah, yes, yes, nitrous, yes. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, let me choose something. Um, are you male and or this. female at the moment? I'm both. I'm both. Oh, oh, I forgot about it's that. It's more energy vibration than than physicality, but beautiful. Yes, yes. Uh, I would choose something like an English scholar of 17th century would wear, maybe. That's a lot of clothing. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's not a three-piece suit. That's a five-piece suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe uh, a full dress of Indian shaman. Oh, looks, looks beautiful! Yeah. Yes. Yes. I would, I would look comic in it, but um, that would be perfect. <laughs> yes. Yeah, something, something with a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, here's a question that just popped in my mind. Yes. What about hair? If you could have hair, what kind of hairstyle do you like? I have curly hair. Are you interested in curly hair? Yes. Hmm? Mm. It's looking so foreign. It doesn't matter. Um, whatever entertains you. Um, imagine a gray and put any hair on the on a, on a gray. So. A mohawk. <laughs> I was thinking mohawk. Oh man! I would I would do orange spiky one. 
Yes. Oh my god, oh. that would look so great. That would. Oh my goodness, you should try it. Please. <laughs> Please take a picture. Uh, yes. <laughs> I enjoy your company Sabrina, so much. Sabrina, can, can you get him with the mohawk if you could draw a picture? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Do we have Sabrina here? Yes, I'm here. Hey, Sabrina. Hello. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm having good, quiet laughter here. Nice time. Enlightened, elevated emotions here. We discuss sex in a very gentle fashion. <laughs> So, what kind of clothes do you wear? Are they like loose? Oh, do I? You know, yeah, you'll usually go naked. My type of people. Yeah. <laughs> but, but your nakedness uh, is usually a message, or at least perceived as a message. Perceived as a message. Yes, Thank you. definitely. And our nakedness is a common place. <laughs> so you don't you don't look twice when they're naked? <laughs> how do you how do you distinguish a look of wanting to be with the person and a look of hello? Mm -hmm. We don't usually go by looks, we are telepathic. So you just send it, the message telepathically so Yes. So by sight you don't convey emotions? Not much, not much, not much. We can see, but we sense it first, and seeing goes second, so it's it's more like secondary thing. Do you think your species will eventually evolve without eyes because of so? Ah, um, let me think. Mm. No, we do a lot of technology, and, and some of the technology is not conscious, so we have to see some. No, I, eyesight is still useful. It's just not not for for expression of relations with each other. And also, mm, yeah, we just use it for practical purposes, like take things, put things, that sort of thing. If you could sense everything without eyes, yes, of course, we would need them. But eyes are handy. So, Sabrina, what's what's up? Okay, so... Can we talk a little bit about the UGL intellect? Yes. Um, do you have or do you sense this distinctions in the uh, level of intelligence between each other? Or do you just distribute among yourselves whatever task is at hand and no thought is given into it? A good question, thank you. Uh, yes, um, no, we are different. We like uh, differences in individuality. We choose to develop in one direction and another. And personalities, we have different personalities as well, and different preferences and talents. We have connections to hive mind to each other, and we can telepathically connect at big distances. It doesn't matter as much. So uh, the question was intellectuality. It's more about what excites you than your abilities, I would say. Abilities evolve, yes. Abilities evolve based on your excitement, yes. 
and and um, once you choose like over here on Earth, basically yes. once you choose a path, a career, mm -hmm. uh, something that you learned, you pretty much stay with it your entire life. Do you do the same thing over there? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we live longer lives, and there is much less survival pressure. So, your main goal is, of course, of service to others, and also of personal spiritual growth. So, these are two main things: service to others and personal spiritual growth. And both, I would say, evolve with time. With time, you find new ways to serve others, and you you learn much after you excel in one thing. You explore that topic. You evolve to a new topic. It's very natural. It doesn't come with any force. It just naturally evolves. And we play with much. How do you say? In one sense, your diversity is very high, but in other sense, we have more access to different dimensions. We play with parallel timelines, and we play with different times, so the idea of time is much more flexible. And we have just bigger universe you are sort of compressed on one planet and you have a galaxy to explore. And that makes tons of differences. When you can go anywhere, we are we don't have citizenship. We have alignments, but we can go somewhere and work with different races if we choose to. So there is a lot of choices and as you evolve you explore different new things so and the situation changes the dynamics the history changes a lot of things change with time so staying in one place could be but it would, wouldn't be often it would be rare yeah so what is your interest oh sorry Sabrina go ahead um, just one last question. Can you tell me three things that you think helps the UEL civilization with their spirituality? Compared to what? Just in general helps? Yes. Just in general, three things that benefits, that has benefits a great deal your civilization. Oh, it makes it special. Well, that has benefited you spiritually. It has helped you grow spiritually. Uh -huh. Like, here we use meditation a lot. Oh, the tools, you mean, the tools. The tools, yes, the tools. Uh -huh. Tools spiritually. Mm. Yes. Mm. I would say is telepathy would be a tool. I mean, it's a common place here. But we are good. Our telepathy is one of the best in uh, among peers. Okay. So good telepathy. Uh, availability of the higher mind. It is a same as your collective. It's our collective, but we can directly talk to our collective, and we can look for information there, and we can communicate to it both directions. Mm -hmm. Oh, and on the topic. Sorry, I I just have a quick question yes, on the collective. Yes. When you say communicate with 
the collective are you saying as like a separate being in and of itself? Hmm. No, it's more like internet. You don't talk to internet as a being, but you talk to internet. That sort of thing. Hmm. Thank you for that clarification. It's it's a little different, but. Um, it gives you and it takes. It is thing by itself, but it is not a person. Yes, it's uh, there is no voice to it, but there is information coming, and there is a consciousness. It's collective consciousness, but it's it's a consciousness. Yes. Thank you. Mm, the third thing. A tool. It's more like a mission. We our mission is to create new life, to create new species, and to plant it across the universe. Is it a tool? It is a more mission. Okay. So what about in terms of being able to relate to other species? Do you think that telepathy is the bridge that helps unite the different species? Or do you find that there's something else? In order for them to communicate and get along. Yes, um, is this just a language? Yes, it's just a way of communication. You travel to a different country, so you speak to them. So, so do we. Each species has its own telepathic language, and there is international telepathic language. And sometimes it's not very compatible, so you have to establish the communication. It's like learning languages. Mm, other tools. I guess it's coming, finding common commonalities and common interests. Nothing very different from what you have on Earth. I wouldn't say there is much difference, except we are being held by higher forces and we communicate to higher forces. So there is more of spiritual meaning in every development. So that is much more transparent in our world than it is on Earth. That is different. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So let's start wrapping up, but before that, Sabrina, is there any topic you bring today, any excitement, any problem, any challenge? And what is your main thought of today, of the past day? The main thought of today was laughing. <laughs> ah, nice. I didn't sense that. Nice. <laughs> ah. What did you laugh on? What did you laugh about? Uh, well, I actually enjoy that um, it seems that today we had uh, all the old members showed up. Ah. So many members that hadn't been around for quite a while uh, came and we had a good time together. Nice. And uh, just had fun together and laughed. It's fun to laugh about life and the ah, things yes. that happen. You know, laughter is a universal thing. Many species have laughter. Do you have laughter? Yes. Yes, it's a. It is when you move fast, you have inertia, and then you hit some wall of challenge, and you get over it, and you kind of jump, pum 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 pum. That's laughter. You always have to go 
hit the ball and go up. You raise the new level, and laughter is just a signature of that new level. It creates a new vortex, new repeat, new vortex. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Yes, so we have. Let's do our blessings. It's uh, yes. time for okay. us to wrap up. It was a pleasure to talk to everyone. Thank you much for the company. I enjoyed. It's a pleasure talking with you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Much love. Much love. Anybody is into blessings, Sabrina? Would you like to? gives us a blessing and whoever else wants to yes um, let's see takana kyoko to lua kati kyoko runo akati kyoro no koto kolua lalaka Tio no kuluana naskaria kotulua taka. Meniori o kotu kolokutu sanakata katakata. I uata ki kio tonuaka. Ko suakata nanaka li. I otonaka. Tolono sokurua tiaka. I osonoku. Tolono no kuta ki uata. Menio katia la kataka. I'm a little bird. I'm making my dress from what I see. I take one of my feathers from the sun and put on myself. I take one of my feathers as a leaf from a tree and put on myself. I take one of the feathers from the river and put on myself. I take a flower petal and put on myself. I have all colors and I'm beautiful and I fly. Was that the translation? I don't know, but it is my reflection on what was said. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks, you. Thank you for coming. Yes. Probably. All right. Have a good evening. You too. You too. Talk to you later. Goodbye. 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 Namaste. Ah. Привет, товарищи. Привет. Спасибо. Как дела? Как дела? All right. Uh, thank you much. I'm, I'm, I feel I feel good. I feel. Uh, That was anyway. really nice. Thank you. It was beautiful. Thank you, Max. And um, you, whoever uh, listens and you are not part of our Hangouts, contact any one of us and we will bring you to our Hangout chats where we announce the next um, Hangout so you can take part in those. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care. Bye. Much love. <laughs>